wisdom from above. We'll talk about that today on Bible Time. Hello again, everyone. Thank you for joining me for Bible Time. So as I was talking with the Lord, preparing for what to talk about for Bible Time, I was I no more than got the sentence out. Didn't even finish it. I was like, Lord, what would you like me to talk? And boom, James 3. Like, okay, I guess I'm going to look in James 3. And I see it's about taming the tongue. And I thought, I don't know what I can say about that. You know, nothing was coming to me. And then I looked down and I see wisdom from above and it went boom, clicked with me immediately. Yes, this is what God wants us to talk about. So here we go. Who is wise and understanding among you? By his conduct, let him show his works in the meekness of wisdom, in the humility of wisdom, if you will. But if you have bitter jealousy and selfish ambition in your hearts, do not boast and be false to the truth. Ooh, that's a tough one there. This is not wisdom that comes from above, but is earthly, unspiritual, demonic. For where jealousy and selfish ambition exist, there will be disorder and every vile practice. Wow, he's really laying it out here. But the wisdom from, wisdom from above is first pure, then peaceable, gentle, open to reason, full of mercy and good fruits, impartial and sin sincere, and a harvest of righteousness is sown in peace by those who make peace. Boom! Mike dropped James. That was a good one. So let's talk about that. I know a lot of people, not just pastors, people in ministry that have selfish ambitions and um, I used to be one of them. God, thankfully, has corrected me of it. And, you know, there may be times when it comes back up and, and I have to ask God, to break it back down, Lord. I, I see it coming. I recognize it. And it was, for me, it was out of um, something that comes from, I think, First Thessalonians, if, or maybe Colossians, I can't remember now, but wanting to please people instead of wanting to please God. Paul says, I don't want to please people. I want to please God. Well, I wanted to please people. I wanted people to like me. I, I had a self-esteem issue many years ago. And but thankfully, like I said, the Lord has brought me out of that. It's been several years now. But anyway, so I can recognize this selfish ambition when I see it in people. And part of it is the Holy Spirit speaking to me. And, and I, he asks me to pray for these people. And I'm not here to call anybody out or point anybody out or, or say anything about anybody. I'm just here to say, let's think about what selfish ambition does. And, and Paul I'm sorry, James says it really well here. This is not wisdom that comes down from above. God is not going to give you selfish ambition. He's not going to point people at you. He's not going to say, hey, look what look what Phil can do. Look what you know James can do, whatever. He's not going to say that. He is going to point everything to him. He's perfect. It's not that God's arrogant and wants all the glory. He deserves the glory. He's perfect. Anyway, it, and he says it's earthly, unspiritual, and demonic. You know, I never really thought about that, but I guess yeah, it's, there's a demonic force that could be behind that. Definitely earthly, and most certainly unspiritual. For where jealousy and selfish ambition exist, there will be disorder in every vile practice. And you know... For whatever reason it is, for me it was a self-esteem issue. For if you just somebody's looking for greed, for power, for hunger, they they are just so full of themselves and they don't even see through it. You know, whatever the reason is, there's many reasons people have selfish ambition, but in all cases you see the fruit of it. For me, it was I fell apart. I hit rock bottom, I and mean, God just said, you know, this is enough of this, Phil. You're going to come around, or you're not. And he wanted me to come around and I did. Thank him for that too. But anyway, he, you know, people, ministries get destroyed. Um, there's all kinds of criminal things that can happen as a result. Typically, it's very unethical, unspiritual, immoral, but many things can happen when we have selfish ambition. Now, I'm not saying, you know, get to the point where you hate yourself. That's not what selflessness is. 
Selflessness is knowing that I like myself enough to know that I shouldn't want this for myself. Do you know what I mean? God doesn't want us to hate ourselves. And when he tells us to, to take up our cross and follow him, it's not you're not crucifying your flesh to the cross. Crucifying your flesh means that you're giving up those selfish desires, those things that you want for the kingdom of God. And it's a process that God will have to almost always, I, would, I want to say always, but I say almost always, break you of because we don't see it in ourselves. So maybe we need to take an inventory. Let's go to God. I'm going to do it too. You know, I'm going to go do this after I get done recording this. And I'm going to say, hey, God, is there anything still in me that's selfish ambition? Am I looking for something that I shouldn't be looking for? And let's give it up. Let's hand it over to God and see what he does with it. It might change things. You just never know. So that's your Bible time for today. I hope you enjoyed it, and I'll talk to you again all real soon. God bless.